translation that I read, what we're about to get is the faded book four. If you could describe book four in one word, what would you use? Bad times. Wait, that's one two word. words. <laughs> <laughs> Bad times, one word. Bad. <laughs> Even though me, Stitch, and the mini dolls had a great time at the mall and easily found the book, nothing could have prepared me for the scene. Oh. Oh. That's <laughs> right in front of Bath and Body Works. What's up guys, it's Kicker. I just got volume six of TGCF. And the reason why this is so special, not only is it the second to last edition, but this book has the confession scene between Shilian and Hua Chung, like no more misunderstandings. They literally confess in their own perfect Hualien way. And there's even incredible art of it on the front cover. But not only is there the confession, right after that, we delve into the lengthiest, most traumatic backstory you may ever read. <laughs> of course, if you then end up reading more Danmei, you'll find that a lot of them have very tragic backstories. But if you love Xilian, this one will be extra tragic. And I'm actually not exaggerating. Like, it is very gory and horrific. So if that is something that you're triggered by. It is a it is a very triggering, intense scene. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually not joking around. Like, it's f***ed up, man. <laughs> that being said, I personally can handle angst, and I would say this is my favorite book out of the whole series. And the trauma that Shelian goes through is a reason why I liked it so much. It's not like I like seeing him be hurt, but it's how he deals with his, uh, mental illness that comes from him being hurt and how he has rebuilt himself and also knowing that it's a flashback really helps because we know that he ends up being okay <laughs> spoilers ahead i am going to be rambling about the scenes i remember and some of my favorite scenes so if you haven't read tgcf before or you're planning on it click away now. So let's take a look at some of the images in this incredible copy. So right off the bat, we have this beautiful cover of Shilian hugging Hua Chung's back. Now this moment is when Shilian basically admits to Hua Chung or says that he has the same feelings that Hua Chung has for him, or he accepts them. Hua Chung is so vulnerable in this moment, and I truly think this image really captures it. Oh, I just love this art style so much. It's beautiful. And of course, there's also the red string from Hua Chung's hand coming down, and Uming is kind of front and center there. Tons of beautiful butterflies. It's just gorgeous. I love it. And then on the inside cover, we actually have a little eye and I believe this is like a Ming's eye, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. So we've got a Ming's eye in there. So that's cool. And one more page and we boom, get a beautiful size of the cover art where you can see Shilian's robes in the wind and just more of the beautiful butterflies. Oh, I really, really love this image. And on the next page in, oh, <laughs> These are so cute. It's Shilian and Hua Chung sitting on some grass watching lanterns in the sky. This is so romantic and it looks like I think they're holding hands. It's kind of hard to see. It's just so romantic to watch lanterns with somebody. And I love the colors, how it's just blue and orange. It's just, it's so beautiful. I think I have right there. Yes. <laughs> I bought the Taiwanese version of the books and the last one I think came with a bunch of those photo cards. So I have been very lucky to get them already. So inside the chapter starts with the cave of 10,000 gods. Oh my God. <laughs> This is where we find out, or Shilian really finds out, how deep Hua Chung's obsession with him has been throughout centuries, like eight centuries long. But also Feng Xin and Bu Qing find out about it first. And it is a humiliating scene full of misunderstandings. And the part that's so heartbreaking is there's a part where there's Feng Xin and Mu Qing and they are telling Hua Chung how disgusting he is and how his obsession with Xilian is gross and they're insinuating that he's about to like defile Xilian and Xilian is unable to speak. Like he's got a talisman put on him and Hua Chung literally says that he's not gonna argue that Xilian might find him disgusting. Like he truly thinks that that is an option. And Xilian is like, no, I wanna speak out and, and say like, that's not true. But he can't because he can't speak. You get to see this very nervous and uncertain Hua Chung after literally like six novels of him being so strong. You finally get to see him break down 
in front of his highness. There's literally a line that's not talked about a lot where Hua Cheng says, how could I ever let you go? It's a very, very, very romantic scene full of tension and just like rereading this, it's insane how much you like forget about the little details and how important the little details are. Like MXTX is such an incredible writer. Like I got so immersed in the story, even though it's one I already know. And that's just the first chapter in this book. The next chapter, Hua Chung is straight up like gaslighting and lying to Shilian, trying to save his ass in this moment. And he's like, oh yeah, the statues here, who knows who made them? They're probably of the Prince of Wuyang. And Shilian's like, nah, these are of Shanla. I know that, I know the dress for sure. Like these are Shanla statues. <laughs> And Hwachun's like, oh, who would have known? Anyways, let's go this way. It gets to a point where everything is so jumbled up and chilean has been lied to and there's so many misunderstandings and they're trying to figure out who White Clothed Calamity is and it's kind of even pointing that it could be Hua Chung. And then Shilian asks, says, I need to ask you one question. And Hua Chung's like, what is it? Like bracing himself for the worst. And Shilian's like, who is your beloved and special someone? <laughs> It's like among all the chaos, he thinks he's gonna ask him, are you the killer? Are you my crazy obsessive stalker? And he's literally like, who's your crush? Who's your eight century long crush? And Hua Chung, of course, is like, if you already know, I don't want to say it and I don't want to hear your reaction. And Shilian says, some things like this must be said out loud. And he hugs him. But then there's like a big explosion and they have to run off together. But there's, uh, the line is so beautiful. Let's talk later, Shilian said. And thus the two continued on, except now they were running hand in hand. Oh man, okay. So in this book, we have some incredible pictures. We've got Shilian in the cave of the 10,000 gods and Hua Chung uh, looking away. <laughs> and then we have a Hualian kiss. Oh. This is my absolute favorite kiss scene between Shilian and Hua Chung because of this line. They kissed and embraced for a long time in the snowstorm before their lips slowly parted. Shilian was dazed for a good moment before he jolted out of his stupor. Flushed, he opened his eyes. W what was that all of a sudden? Although it wasn't the first time they'd done this, they had always used grand dignified reasons to justify their actions. Things like lending spiritual powers, transferring air, or it was simply an accident. But now that certain things had been made clear, those excuses were exposed as falsehoods and their actions were abruptly far more significant. Now they were kissing because they both love each other. <laughs> And right off the bat, Hua Chung is like on his seduction journey, like he's puffing breath into his ear. I'll lend your highness a bit of spiritual power in case of an emergency, he whispered. Won't you accept it? Like, there's a reason he is the best lover out of the MXTX tops, said by MXTX herself. Oh, then this is where we get to the fucked up stuff. We're now in flashbacks, we've got Ghost Flame Hua Chung as a little baby. <laughs> More Ghost Flame Hua Chung. This is when Shilian swears for the first time. <laughs> he gets stuck in a hole. This is not funny. This scene is like super f***ing sad, but it's kind of funny because Shilian's never sworn before. So he's kind of like testing out different swears. And then he gets so cold and he has a little Hua Chung ghost flame trying to keep him warm, but ghost flames burn cold so he can't. And he can hear Hua Chung's voice. Like he hears the little ghost flame calling out to him saying, oh God, please wait for me. Just wait for me. Please give me a little more time. Let me, let me. God, is it calling for me? Shilian wondered to himself, but even if it was praying to him, it would be pointless. He was already powerless as a God and he was even less capable now that he wasn't. Oof. <sighs> Yeah, here's uh, that picture. Yup, man, this is so f***ed up. This is the scene where White No Face tells a church full of people that the cure to human face disease is if you stab Shilian. So they are going one by one, stabbing him with a sword till he is literally a pile of guts. He's immortal, so he ends up like growing back together, but it is up and Shilian is in pain, screaming. And there is a whole page that just says, help me, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, why can't I die? And if that wasn't even the worst thing that could happen, after that, Function leaves him and his parents kill themselves. <laughs> He's not doing so hot after that, but luckily a little guy named Wu Ming comes along. Something else that I completely forgot about is like how 
bitchy white no face is and how white no face is all like oh your highness is are things going wrong like oh your highness you think you know everything where he is just on his ass the whole time being like what are you doing like you think what you're doing is going to change things like nope you're going to fail no matter what like this little voice in his ear literally in front of him and there's a scene where Shillian has himself pinned down to the ground and white no face is like leaning over him and Shillian's like get out of my way I can't see the sky. And he's like, what's so great about the sky? And he's like, it's prettier than you. <laughs> White No Face is like, what are you doing? And he's like, it's none of your shitty business. <laughs> and also in this book, holy cow, is such a significant moment where Shillian gets his bamboo hat and the significance of it and why he still wears it. And that whole scene where Shillian has no hope for humanity and he does one final try where he stabs himself and lays down in the street and is just asking for one person to help him. But because he's a god of misfortune, everyone is trying to avoid him or says that he got what he deserved. But one person gives him his hat because it's raining and shields him from the rain and like helps him up. And that stops Shillian from wanting to uh, commit mass genocide. <laughs> but really think about how important of a moment that was for Shillian to have one person do that for him. And then, oh my God, then there's the whole Wu Ming thing where like Shillian's genocide act already was in place. So Wu Ming ends up taking the blow for him. If you've already read TGCF, I would just recommend buying this book and reading it again. Like there are so many incredible scenes in this. I'm just like freaking blown away. Like my love for TGCF had not gone anywhere, but it is just like so, fierce right now. I am a little ghost flame trying to burn bright for Shulian right now. <laughs> oh man, and there's pictures of Wu Ming in here. Well, if you guys liked this video and you'd like to help support my channel, consider checking out my YouTube membership. This Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST, we're doing a members-only live stream where we can talk more about the book and play MXTX games together. Click join to learn more down below. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye! I made a whole meme video talking about book four, which is now book six. And if you'd like to check that out, I'll link it right here. It's uh, pretty dark. <laughs>